in our time, these are our enemies. And they're the enemies of the Muslim world just as much as of the Western world. Um, you know, who suffered the most from the Taliban? Ordinary Muslims Ordinary in Afghanistan. Afghan Muslims. Who suffered the most from the rule of the Ayatollahs? Mm -hmm. You know, today in Iraq, 99% of the killings are being carried out by Muslims against other Muslims. Today in Darfur, you have a, civil, a racist civil war in which Arab Muslims are exterminating African Muslims. And where is the protest against that? Where is the Islamic protest against that? Exactly. Um, um, it, it seems to me that you know, Muslim lives only count when they're snuffed out by non-Muslims. Yeah, but this kind of genocide yeah. appears to be, why should we get upset about that? You know? So the problems are there that people are not, you're, you're right, that we've got so mealy-mouthed that we have become unwilling to call things by their real name for fear of being called racist or Islamophobic. Or Actually, truthfully, if, if, if you hold a series of ideas which I detest, it's okay to be phobic about them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, I mean if, if you were sitting there espousing Nazi ideology and I said I detest that, I hate it, I would not be prejudiced. I would be responding acceptably to what I detest. And there are people around who for completely legitimate reasons, this doesn't include you, um, detest what Islam has become. And it is okay to say so. I do detest mm. what Islam has become. Mm. And hence the title of my book, The Trouble with Islam Today. Mm. What I also believe yes. is that what has always been right with Islam can be harnessed yeah. to cure what has gone wrong yes, within you, Islam yes. today. You think, you think yes, that. I yes. know, I know. <laughs> um, the patronizing but, starts at the end of the conversation. No, no, but I, look, I, the, the, in the, at the, the way in which the non-Soviet left yeah the non-Soviet socialist left rationalized the appalling atrocities going on inside the Soviet Union was that it made a distinction between what it called actually existing socialism, which was the Soviet Union and bad, right. and if you like, the true faith, which was a religion of peace and love, obviously. And if only we could get rid of actually existing socialism, which was brutal and repressive and tyrannical, you would see that true socialism was excellent, right? And I feel that that argument is now being used about Islam. Mm -hmm. That whereas actually existing Islam, wh wherever you see it, mm -hmm. is brutal and repressive and tyrannical and philistine and murderous, that's got nothing to do with the true faith which is full of peace and love. And if we could just get rid of this brutal mistake, the true faith would emerge. Well, I'm sorry, I've given up on that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that anymore. <laughs> and every day I thank God that I live in a society in which, you know, um, Salman can give up on that idea um, without fear of government reprisal for doing so. Um, I actually think, Salman, that the existence of successful atheists like you is proof positive of a very compassionate God.